So fast fashion is just basically churn out designs or styles that are similar to what's available on the runway. So it's, it makes it more accessible to, to people and it's, it's affordable because they, they outsource their production and it's, um, it's cheaper. But as soon as the trend is no longer in season, then you kind of just throw it away. The only thing that we can do is to raise that kind of sense of awareness, I would say, uh, to make a conscious choice in buying things, yeah. And to know from who they're actually buying it. I would love to see more brands designing with thought of the environment and the people around them. I think Milano's like to invest in experience, so the experience of having something unique, that, that, that in itself is an experience, not just, you know, possessing something materialistic. I think it takes a while to establish an aesthetic, because when it comes to fashion, it's strongly influenced by like the country itself, like in terms of community, what people are willing to buy. There needs to be more inclusivity. So I talked about this even in, uh, in, in other press conference that we have, uh, because in Brunei, we don't have, say, uh, a fashion council like what we had. Um, like what we see in, in, in Singapore or in KL, like uh, they have like their own textile federation and fashion kind of council together. Textile and fashion here, it seems like it's a bit, uh, you can see that there's a gap there. And um, the infrastructure to actually gather everyone to, to, to grow together, it's still relatively small. I think another aspect would be the whole supply chain as a whole. Uh, from the you know production to the, the logistics cost. So I think in Brunei, it's such a small market that um, for brands to be able to thrive, you're, you know you have to you have to penetrate two international markets. I think that it has been evolving because year on year we see uh, more and more designers, um, up and coming designers just showcasing their art. Um, and their designs, and you can actually feel that they're genuine in trying to show their art and their passion. Um, in terms of design elements, I, it's more on what's trending or what's selling well. It's heavily influenced by um, the big fashion houses, but in terms of having a particular style like the Japanese designers, I think probably in about 20 years or, 10, or even 10 years, but at the moment I, I feel that it's still not really established yet. In here, we can see that even 30 and below, bespoke is something that they really, really want to, to have. Like they want to have their own, they want their individuality to be celebrated. Consumerism is quite high here. You always see expos and then, you know, consumer fairs and stuff like that. But I feel like, you know, because people here as well, there's all different sizes. So that's why people like things tailored to them as well. So my advice for upcoming Brunei designers on how they can find success in Brunei or abroad, I feel that in terms of Brunei, we don't really have like a, a close uh, fashion board right now, like a council to sort of bring all the designers together, all the creatives together. And I feel that Progressive is doing that right now because you guys are compiling, you know, videographers, musicians, fashion designers. So I think if we do this more, then we can foster a stronger um, creative community. Progress of getting to where we want to be um, and what we want to see in a fashion industry in Brunei is to work together. To see the cause and the goal as a bigger picture and it's bigger than your competitions. <laughs>